survivor here and today I want to talk about a subject that is a very real possibility I'm supposing that nothing happens and the world just keeps rolling the way it is and there's no world ending event anytime soon then one of the distinct possibilities that could occur in the very near future or within probably the next five to ten years is an artificial intelligence problem as I call it as we look at industry today, the advancements that are made in robotics and in artificial intelligence, this mind-boggling the advancements that have been made and the things that these robots can do, the things that they can do that we don't even know about. For everything we see in YouTube videos and the research that we do firsthand working on these uh, systems and things such as that, as a robotic engineer myself, I'll be the first to tell you that the things we see robots do in the industrial environments is nothing compared to the capabilities of what these robots actually have. Robots are physically stronger than humans. They have a better endurance than humans. They don't question orders. They don't take breaks. Robots are essentially what we would call the uh, perfect employee or the perfect worker. The last video started the artificial intelligence series and we focused on industrial robots, robots that people interact with in an industrial environment or a manufacturing type of setting. But there are also some companies out there that we really need to be on the lookout for and these companies are rising very quickly with some of their advancements and innovations that are taking the place of humans in every aspect of society basically from driverless cars to computers that program themselves. Some of these companies are iRobot. They were founded in 1990 by three MIT graduates and this is one of the leading consumer brands of robotics in the world. Gray Orange. They design and manufacture advanced robotic systems for logistic and supply chains. Rethink Robotics. Rethink Robotics has introduced what's called collaborative robots, and these are robots that work side by side with humans, and they greatly reduce the risk to human beings with their type of force sensing technology that they can sense the amount of torque on each axis if they were to collide with a human. So basically robots that can feel if they hit something. Alphabet Incorporated, and this is one of the ones that gets the most attention, and as we all know that Alphabet is, one, is the company that owns Google, and Google has basically redefined the field of artificial intelligence and robotics, going from an internet giant to a robotics giant, and their first major leap was their driverless cars, and some of the innovations that Google is putting to the market these days is really almost scary from a human standpoint because these are the type of innovations that take away our abilities to make decisions and the computers will make decisions for us. Some other companies that are really developing artificial intelligence, DJI, Locus Robotics, Shank, Vex Robotics, Autonomous Solutions, and the list goes on. But those are some of the major ones and we can research on the internet and find many more companies and when we start looking into the field of artificial intelligence some of the advancements and some of the innovations are things that we would have never imagined just a few decades ago when we look at the state of world affairs and look at history in general then one of the things that has always been predominant throughout history is that the rich try to get richer while they try to keep the poor getting poorer and there's never been a larger divide between the rich and the poor than there is now in the United States. The middle class, as we so call it, is rapidly disappearing. When we look at technology and the advancements, uh, we talk about how easier this makes our jobs, how, how much more inexpensive that it may make some products, even though we really haven't seen the inexpensive part of it in our everyday shopping yet. But the claims are that it's going to make products more inexpensive and it's going to create jobs that are going to give people uh, better lifestyles, uh, better paychecks, and things like that. But in reality, if we look at it, the majority of the jobs that I've seen created from a robotic engineering standpoint 
The jobs that are being created are robotic programmers, robotic installation, some maintenance, some repair, electronic troubleshooting, things like that, jobs along those lines. These aren't creating new jobs in the industrial facilities. These are creating what usually fall into the category as contract positions. When a facility decides that they're going to expand and going to add robots in to replace some of the quote unquote non-essential personnel, initially that does cut out the jobs for all three shifts that a human would have to work. And it seems like there are more jobs being created due to the fact that we see workers installing these robots, we see workers repairing these robots, programming these, getting them up to speed, getting the work cells straightened out so that the robotic cells can perform the tasks that humans normally perform right now. But the problem with that is at some point that industrial facility is going to have all the robots that it can fit inside of it. And once these robots are installed and once this technology is in place, these units don't fail very often. We see it every day and anybody that works in any type of uh, a technology related field is seeing robots and artificial intelligence devices rapidly taking the place of positions or jobs that would have been filled by human workers. The idea behind this, the concept of it is great. I'll be the first to admit it's great. We have the robots do jobs that people don't want. We have the robots do jobs that are dangerous to people. But industry in general, and especially the people in control of the industry, the ones who want more money, basically, that's not enough. We're not going to stop there. Are we going to stop installing robots just when we have the robots doing the dangerous jobs or just when the robots are doing the menial jobs that nobody wants? No, it's going to keep going, and it does keep going right now. And now the robots are replacing the jobs that people do want, the assembly line workers, the, the material handlers, the welders, the metal workers, and all other aspects of our industrial production. Since 1967, when some of the uh, first robots were introduced by several different companies, with ABB being one of the leaders at that time, robotics began to really make a name for themselves back, back then in the late 60s, early 70s. And people who owned these companies, the owners of uh, the large corporations, they started to see the advantages of having these robots in place. And the advantage is, yes, a robot system is very expensive, but after that initial cost is paid, and basically that's after the first year when the companies write this off on their taxes as a business expense, then there's no more expense except upkeep. And robots are designed to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Robotic systems fail more often when they stand, when they stand as opposed to work. Robots are designed to never stop, to never power down. And this is going to lead to something that a lot of people may not be taking into consideration. Maybe there's never going to be a nuclear war. Let's hope not. Maybe there's never going to be an alien invasion and maybe that asteroid doesn't hit the Earth in our lifetimes or even our children's lifetimes. Maybe Yellowstone doesn't hit Maybe these other catastrophes don't happen, but one thing that is absolutely sure to happen, and that's that the technology we have in place today will rapidly outpace what we've ever seen. Every day they come out with a new cell phone, some company or another does, that has new features, things that we'd never really imagined before on a phone. Every day, every month, robotics companies come out with new developments, increasing the capabilities of our robotic counterparts. So what I see happen is something that I believe is far more likely than uh, some really far-fetched event occurring. What I see happening is basically society just progressing the way we are. We sit idly by while all of the corporations hire robots instead of hiring humans. We see that new jobs are being created looking at these job statistics and looking at the job growth in the United States. But, you know, we can't really trust those numbers. And that's because a lot of the jobs that are being created are jobs that are at fast food restaurants or jobs that are, are just to say, lower paying jobs than the ones that's being taken. 
I know at least in my area of the country. An assembly worker is going to make between 20 to 28 bucks an hour and, and you know that's on the average after they've been trained up and, and they're fully capable of running their job. And that's a pretty good living for a lot of people. That's a pretty decent living. But these jobs are rapidly being replaced. In some robotic factories, we have robots building robots. You can even see the robots, and when we look at futuristic movies such as Terminator, Salvation, towards the end of it, you see one of the most popular brands, the ABB, is actually in that factory building the Terminators. And I'm not saying we're going to see Terminators. I don't believe that robotics is going to progress to the level that we have a Skynet type of event that robots are going to take over and we have to go to war against machines that are bulletproof and things like that. But what I do see is, is something in between and something maybe far worse. And that's the fact that the people with the money, the people that do own these corporations, they don't want to take a step backwards. To stop installing robotic systems would be basically taking a step backwards for them because now they're going to have to hire three or four humans to do the job that one robot did. So the major concern for this, it, to me, is not so much a robot apocalypse or a Skynet type of thing. The concern for me is more of a civil war and an economic collapse. What are we going to do when we finally do realize that the new jobs that are being created are minimum wage jobs? When the good paying jobs are gone because the robots are in place. Now there will always be people that have to work on these and that, that have to program robots, that have to design the work cells. But if you look at any major corporation, the research and development department for these corporations is much smaller than the workforce on the factory floor. The ones on the factory floor, these are the ones I'm talking about. These are the people like me that are going to really be impacted by these advancements in robotics and artificial intelligence. When it comes to artificial intelligence, we see evidence of this, uh, something sort of really weird that happened with a Facebook experiment a while back. And this is sort of old news. I know that everyone's already heard this. But Facebook decided they were going to create an artificial intelligence that would be able to interact with humans, uh, just like the phone systems when we call somewhere and uh, we talk to a computer and they decide who we need to speak to. But when Facebook did this, and I'll put a link in the description uh, to some articles that describe this process a lot better than I'm going to go into it here. But they created two computers and what occurred from that is almost disturbing. And it's the fact that these two computers began to talk to one another. Not only did these computers begin to talk to one another, but they realized they were being monitored. And upon that realization, they created their own language. And these computers began to speak to the, each other with their own language, one that's not understood by man. So this was really disturbing if the robot systems, these two computers, and this has been a few years back, were intelligent enough to realize that they were being listened to, that they were being monitored, that they created their own language so that we could not understand them. And that in itself tells us that artificial intelligence is way past any level we've ever seen on TV and in the movies and they're not telling us about any of it. Now let's think about how honest the government has been with us over the years. The government always tells us exactly what's going on, don't they? They always tell us every type of technology they're designing. They always tell us everything we need to know. No, we know that's not true. The government keeps more secrets than any other organization or entity in the world, and I understand that they have to for a large portion of this. But with the artificial intelligence that we see on a regular basis, then we can only imagine the types of artificial intelligence that are currently in action in government facilities in some of these secret locations. Now this may sound like a bunch of uh, conspiracy theory type of stuff, but just think about it for a minute. The rich want to get richer and they want to hold the poor down because if we're rich, then we don't have to take their orders. If we're middle class, then we don't really have to take their orders because we're capable of supporting ourselves. So they, they don't want three classes. They want two. They want the rich and they want the very poor or the slaves. And we will become their slaves if we're not very careful. 
I don't believe Skynet is going to take over the world, and I don't believe we'll be fighting T-2000s that look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. As far as the robots taking over on their own, I think we're a long ways away from that, but it is a very possible situation that robotics will be developed high enough as they already are and effective and efficient enough that they can control a population's movements and keep a population in check and enforcing the laws, rules, and regulations that are laid down by those in power at the time. Although I don't believe that Skynet type of situation will occur at least at this moment in time or any time in the foreseeable future, but I do believe they will implement these devices against us. And we have to ask ourselves which is worse, if the computers themselves try to take over or if the people in charge use this sophisticated technology to hold us in check, to hold us down, and to hold us back. And although the focus of this video is a financial impact and aspect of artificial intelligence, there are many more dangers that this could lead to, and it could lead to situations in which the rich or the ones in power were to use this artificial intelligence against the ones who do not necessarily want to bow to what they tell us we have to do. But I do believe they're going to replace every one of us who has a decent job in the factory with a robot. And we're going to stand in the unemployment line fighting for scraps and fighting for minimum wage jobs. This is going to cause an economic impact that the world has never before seen. But at the same time, the people at the top aren't going to feel it because they're going to be running these factories or owning these factories that are basically completely automated at this point. So their profit margin has increased more than they had ever even anticipated, most likely. And will they care? No, they probably will not care about what happens to us. So where's that gonna leave the average person without a job who can't make your mortgage or your rent payment, who can't make your car payment or even pay the insurance for it? Where is that gonna leave us? That's gonna leave us in a dystopian future that's gonna be extremely difficult to survive in. And the harder things get for the working class, who will now be the poor or the slaves, the harder things get, then the harder that the law is going to crack down on us. Because they will see us as the threat at that point. We are the threat that could put an end to the robotic takeover, basically, of all of our jobs. So we will also be the targets. We have Google, we have Facebook, we have all of these different corporations right now that have technology already in place. I never have to search for anything on my computer anymore. I start typing something in and somehow it knows exactly what I'm looking for every single time. So that's artificial intelligence at its simplest. Imagine at its finest what it could do. And if the ones who are in charge, if the multi-billionaires, multi-millionaires, the ones who are profiting off of the robotic replacements, uh, these people aren't going to give up their positions very easy and they're not going to really stop putting robots into factories just simply so that we can have a better life. This is going to be a problem that we will face. Everything else that we talk about when we talk about prepping, it's all hypothetical, you know. Maybe there will be a civil war, maybe there won't. Maybe there will be a nuclear war, maybe there won't. Maybe the apocalypse will happen, maybe it won't. But this will happen. It's happening already. How many people have lost their jobs already to technology? And right now, right now we are lucky because there are replacement jobs out there because this technology is still in the developmental phase and is still being installed in the majority of these factories. But robots are becoming easier to produce. They're becoming cheaper to produce. You can buy a robotic work cell cheaper than you can buy a car these days. So that makes even the smaller companies look at this as a viable option to replace uh, workers that they're going to have to pay health care for, a 401k match, uh, liability insurance, and things like that. Once all this is installed, once all this is in place, this is when we really have to ask ourselves, where do we stand now? Because there won't be many jobs. There won't be high paying jobs for us to take. But this is the concern that I have. It's not that I believe artificial intelligence is going to take over the world and we're going to be slaves to the robots. 
It's the rich that are going to take over the world. These corporation owners and companies that are going to take over the world, and they already have pretty much. And we're going to be slaves to them because they have a robot waiting in line to take our place no matter what position we hold. And once artificial intelligence takes more leaps and more bounds and is a little more capable than it is right now, then the decision-making process is going to be made by robots. And when the human factor is taking out of all this decision-making processes, then it's going to be a very cold, very calculated world. And it's going to be difficult for those of us who are just trying to get by to even survive in. So just some food for thought, uh, just my opinion on that, but we are headed in that direction and all of the statistics prove it. Right now, there are over 2 million industrial robots alone in production in the world. And if each of these robots has taken the job of three to four people, then we're looking at six to eight million people already who have lost their jobs to robotics. And we don't really see that. It's not like the owners of the companies come in and they say, hey, we're going to have to lay people off because we put robots in. It's always due to business conditions, market conditions, and things like that is what they're going to claim. But in the end, does it really matter what they claim when we don't have a job and we're in the unemployment line and our unemployment runs out and then we wonder how we're going to feed our families. So this is an event that we are sure to see. We're already in the beginning stages of it, and it's not going to take very long before this really takes hold of society and in industry and production are a thing of the past as far as humans go. So just wanted to touch on that a little bit and talk about it. Going to look at some in-depth issues about the artificial intelligence and some of the advancements that have been made in videos upcoming here on the channel. And also going to get back to some of the other series that I got going on, the SHTF Defense and Tactics series, because no matter what happens, we have to be able to defend ourselves. So hope you enjoyed the video. And for now, Sir Survivor, out.